Dear AutoVisi readers, this is the McLaren P1. This year, McLaren celebrates its 50-year anniversary. That's 50 years of racing and winning in Grand Prix and other race series. Those 50 years' experience culminate in this product, which is effectively targeted or conceptualized to be the best or the ultimate driver's car on both, both road and track, from the carbon fiber chassis to the aerodynamic properties of the car to the new hybrid system, everything ends with this car. So, what do we have? We have 916 horsepower. We have 900 newton meters of torque. We have a car capable of doing zero to 100 in less than three seconds, zero to 200 in less than seven seconds, and zero to 300 kilometers an hour in an astonishing less than 17 seconds. So the McLaren P1 is predominantly constructed of carbon fibre. McLaren's history with carbon fibre goes very, very far back. And in fact, as a manufacturer, we feel we have almost ownership of this incredible material. The McLaren P1 is designed in the McLaren Technology Centre, literally next door to where our Formula One cars are designed. This allows an incredible amount of transfer of technology, processes and know-how between Formula One and our road car design. One extremely good example of this is the carbon fiber chassis and carbon fiber generally. If we look back in history, in 1981, McLaren was the first Formula One team to start using carbon fiber in, in race cars. We created the first Formula One car to use carbon fiber for its integral chassis. In 1995, we also launched the McLaren F1, which was the first road car to use carbon fiber in its chassis. We then used this transition for the road cars. In 1995, with the McLaren F1, we were the first carbon fiber chassis road car in production. We've all seen Formula One cars in accidents and watching the drivers walk away is amazing. And this is what we have in this car as well. An extremely safe, rigid, strong carbon fiber chassis, which we call the monocage. We call it the monocage because it incorporates a lower a structure with an upper structure. When designing this component, what we wanted to do was reduce the overall number of components in the car, which also helps us reduce the weight. So in this one piece chassis, which weighs around 90 kilos, we have incorporated obviously the structure of the car, but also the induction for the engine in the roof snorkel you see above. We've incorporated the air boxes where we put the filters directly into the chassis behind this panel here. We also have the battery housing, but then we have smaller details like the hinge points for the, for the doors are in the chassis already, the seal pads where we mount the seals, and also things like the seat belt mounting points. This reduces our overall number of components and allows us to create a much lighter structure. The rear three-quarter view of the P1 is without doubt one of the most impressive. We see a lot of the aerodynamic inspiration, which is genuinely from Formula One, as the same team that designed the aero on this car were actually responsible for the 2008 championship winning Formula One car. We can see this in the dual element wing, also in the aggressive diffuser, and importantly, in the height of this rear deck. Even the exhaust is actually positioned to generate downforce. It's pointing slightly upwards, which creates low pressure under the wing. The rear light graphic is extremely small and thin. This allows for the most optimal heat extraction possible. Brakes and tires have also been specially designed for the P1. The brakes, for a first, we are using a Cabono as our brake partner. These are the suppliers that actually work all our Formula One brake development. What it's allowed us to do is create a new type of carbon ceramic matrix which is lighter and more efficient, gives us ultimate stopping power. The tyres are Pirelli, also designed with our partner, specifically for the P1, and give the ultimate in compromise of road performance and also track use. The interior of the P1 gives a completely unique driver-focused environment. First things we can see here is the induction scoop, the snorkel, which will generate incredible induction noise in the cabin. The screens and layout of the controls are extremely simple and ergonomic. We have a big LCD display, which in different modes will give you a different way of reading the information. Clear information is very important when you're on track. Here we have different components. 
to change the different setups in the car. So we have a handling switch and a powertrain switch. This will change the various levels of roll and damping and heave stiffness created by the hydraulic suspension system. The two buttons down here, or the three buttons, are all performance related. So we have a launch button, which will allow you to do zero to 200 kilometers in under seven seconds. Apart from that, the cabin is very airy and light. We have glass pan panels above the driver and passenger, giving a very nice impression of light and airiness to the cabin, and giving also extremely good visibility. With a low belt line, and a very deep front screen, which is the McLaren USP we see in the 12C and in the old F1. It gives us fantastic forward visibility, also something very important on track. There's one last thing that we can use the hybrid mode for on the P1, which is very, very, very nice. Similarly linked to Formula One, we've got a system which is boost on, and we have a button on the steering wheel called iPass. What this does is it effectively means you're driving in internal combustion mode most of the time, until you press the button. When you press this button, you have a 179 horsepower boost coming through the rear wheels. It's quite exhilarating and actually unique to this car.